Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So today I'm going to do another Banggood review, and I try not to do these too often, but this one I actually requested. So I've asked Banggood to send me uh, two of these cameras. These are uh, HiCU HD IP cameras. They are supposed to be uh, 1080 uh, by 30 frames uh, IP cameras, uh, and we'll, we'll look at the specification on the Banggood website uh, in a minute. Uh, but I did ask them for two of these, right? And I have a reason uh, that I want to uh, test these that I think eventually would probably be a help to other YouTube creators, okay? And uh, so we're going to bring a camera in here and we're going to open these up and see what's uh, in the boxes. And then we'll uh, take a look at the uh, specifications on the website and we'll go from there. So recall I said that I asked for two of these and they did send two of them. They came in a plastic bag uh, just like this here. Uh, they were taped closed and and that's it. So we're going to open one up. They're both the same. So let's open the case up of the box. We see that it comes shipped with um, this is a, a weather resistant connector for your ethernet cable. Uh, it comes with um, some wall anchors and an Allen wrench. And finally the camera. And the camera again is a high CU uh, HB612. So this is supposed to be a 1080p by 30 frames uh, camera supporting uh, RTSP. Uh, and power over Ethernet, but there's the, ether, uh, there's the uh, Ethernet connector and an external power connector. Um, they, did, they do not ship with power supplies, so keep that in mind if you order one of these. Uh, you're not going to get any power supplies. Uh, looks like I got uh, some sort of uh, QI inspection tag. Um, and uh, some sort of card with, you know, it's 30-day guarantee. And then finally, the the, uh, <laughs> the the software manual. That's massive, isn't it? So it's about a quarter sheet of paper, front and back. Um, they do not give you a CD with it. They, instead, they give you a couple URLs to download. Looks like there's some information here on hookup, um, installing the software, the local CMS. Um, and that software configuration, but we're going to get into that. So right now, let's um, let's go to the Banggood website and see uh, what they say this camera is, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm over here at the Banggood um, webpage, and I've done a search on the High CU HB612, and so here we see that uh, this is supposed to be a 1080p camera, uh, two megapixel. Uh, power over Ethernet mini bullet IP camera. Uh, also, uh, it says that it's OnVIF compliant uh, with peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, networking, I guess is what the P2P means. The IP66 uh, waterproof outdoor thing, I think that has to do with, you know, it's uh, this is some sort of um, standard or something. I'm not real sure with that. Uh, IR means infrared, uh, cut night vision. I, I, I assume that that means it's um, will automatically switch over to infrared LEDs once uh, uh, once the uh, uh, amount of light available to the camera uh, isn't available. All right, so we see that it's uh, twenty nine ninety nine. Uh, it's marked to forty nine percent off, so it's not a very expensive camera. But note that it does ship from Cam uh, from uh, China. So expect to wait on it uh, for a couple weeks, few weeks, however you know how they go. When you buy something from China, it could be here in a week. It could be here in uh, a month. So, all right. So let's uh, see what it uh, suggests. Okay, here's the features. Okay, it says that it supports uh, OnVIF um, 2.0, uh, high definition 1080p resolution built IR uh, infrared cut filter, motion tracking, email alerts, plug and play, remote view via multi-platform. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean other than I'm guessing that it's uh, 
you can use or view the cameras uh, on multiple uh, systems like maybe your phone or Windows or Linux or whatever. We'll get into that. Okay, so it says it has a waterproof metal case suitable for indoor outdoor usage. So here's the specifications on it. But I think what I'm interested in here is this. Okay, so frame rates for the video stream it says 1 to 30 frames per second. Um, the resolution is 1920 by 1080. Um, anywhere from 64 kilobits to 12 megabits uh, pixels per second. Looks like the uh, bit rate can be set to variable or constant. Um, the max resolution, okay, so it says that it's 1920 by 1080 by 30 frames per second. So we're going to check that. Um, it looks like that we have, through, at least probably through some software, we can adjust the brightness, contrast, saturation, saturation, sharpness, and white balance. Uh, RJ45 uh, for connector interface, uh, 12 volt DC power supply. That's not included, by the way. Uh, waterproof IP66. I have no freaking clue what that means. But anyway, we get down here and it says that the package includes the uh, camera, uh, the installation accessories, and manual. So they're at least correct there. So it looks like we got some stuff about it here. Down, uh, it says that it supports Onvif. Um, if you're not familiar, Onvif is, Onvif is a uh, standard that um, was created by, I think, Sony and Bosch and a couple of other ones so that there's some uh, uh, interconnectivity uh, between disparate devices. So if I had a Sony uh, DVR and I had a, a Bosch camera or something, they should be able to talk to each other using the Onvif protocols. So we'll, uh, we'll explore that too. Um, so it claims that it's uh, H265. Um, H265 is a, a higher compression, about 50% more compression than H264, uh, supposedly without much of a degradation of video stream. We'll take a look at that too. And um, you know the rest of it is just just add stuff. Um, that's interesting. This is backwards. I don't even know what that says. <laughs> anyway, um, let's uh, let's start in by um, I'll show you how I'm going to uh, hook it up and give you a little bit of. Uh, background on that on, on my network and and because uh, my network is a little bit different um, just a little bit different than most home networks so I'll just give you the, a quick lowdown on that so we'll come in and uh, and uh, we'll show that so my home network is just a little bit different than most I uh, my uh, the central part of my network where, where most people might have like a uh, their DSL router or their cable router uh, I, I have a larger appliance uh, in my network. It's called PFSense. PFSense is based off of FreeBSD, and it's basically just a computer that sits between um, the internet and my other devices. Now, PFSense also provides a host of other um, services. Okay, for example, it provides DHCP and firewall services, routing services, VPN. And a host of, of, of other stuff, right? Uh, this is probably considered an enterprise uh, level firewall router, uh, by the way, which is free. Um, uh, free to download, so you can just go to PFSense, Google PFSense, and you check it out. So, anyway, like I said, PFSense sits, uh, it sits in the middle of my network where one side is the internet and the other side is the other devices that uh, will attach, like the computer or the IP cameras or my database server or whatever right so uh, anything coming in from the internet or out to the internet is monitored and controlled by PFSense anything attaching to my network gets its addressing and that sort of stuff from PFSense PFSense handles all my wireless routing for for me as well so where my wireless routers are just radios at this point okay so the uh, the PoE switch, it's a power on Ethernet switch. Uh, really all it is is like any other networking switch. It just uh, allows you to move data between one device and another. The only difference with a uh, with this switch here 
I have a small unmanaged switch uh, from TP-Link that I purchased for this project. Um, it just provides uh, power to the uh, IP cameras. So um, once the IP camera is, is plugged into it, it sends power, powers it up, and then the camera will uh, ask the DHCP server, I need an address, the DHCP server will send it to the camera and we'll go from there. So I'll take the webcam here and I'll show you, physically I'll show you the hookup and uh, at least uh, from the IP camera and the PoE switch port of view. So let's take a look at that. Okay, well here's the crux of everything. Okay, so I have uh, right here, this is the TP-Link PoE switch that I bought. Uh, it has an uplink here and then four PoE uh, devices can be attached or they can be used as a regular switch. So this this uh, cable here is just feeding this computer that we're looking at right here that I'm using to record my video on, okay? So um, so really, other than that, all you need is a network cable, okay? And of course, the camera. So rather than opening this one here up, let me grab another cable. Okay, and I'm just going to plug it into any port, and I'm going to plug it into the IP camera here. Okay, and if we look real close, I don't know if it pick up, that's very dim. It's negotiating power, and then now it's turned on. So now we're seeing activity, and if we look here, we see that there's activity on the switch. Now, this, by the way, I said this one here plugs into this computer here. This is obviously the camera. This comes from, remember I told you my PFSense box, my switch that, uh, that it runs. So that's how we're going to connect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this. Uh, sorry about that. I didn't mean to bump the camera. I'm going to set this here somewhere where maybe we can get an image of ourselves when we know that it's running. And uh, so let's, uh, I think the next logical step is to take a look at... Um, their software that they recommend uh, we download. It looks like uh, it says the PC client NVS and an IPC tool. So whatever that means. So um, let's uh, take a look at that software and we'll see how easy this is to set up and use. Okay guys, so um, according to the High CU instruction booklet, um, we're telling you to, uh, they, they give you a little indication here on how to hook up uh, the um, camera. Uh, of course, I've already showed you that. And then it says, uh, open the CD and install device manager tool, and then open the tool. Uh, search for the IP of the camera. Um, and then click web browse, or input the IP address into the web browser and log in, and select the video stream for view. The default username is admin with no password. So I'm guessing the that's the IPC tool. So I don't know. So I'm going to type this over here in the browser. And let's see. Okay, so it looks like uh, www.icu.com slash images slash article slash 2019 02 15 2019 02 15 um, T R E T R E C G E dot zip so it's just a direct URL for download and then it says that it's waiting for icu.com according to this we're just waiting for icu.com let me open up another tab and let's just see if we can get to the website Oh, 
guess what? All right, this one finally, this is the, the file that we put in, finally says, yeah, let's, let's save that, right? And, okay, so that, that, that's downloaded. Tell you what, while we're downloading, let's get this other one. Okay, it was www.hic.com slash CMS PC client international dot zip and let's see if this one eventually comes down well it's kind of interesting it does go right to their web website I don't know why uh, it takes so long to download this here is still still looks like it's waiting well, while it's waiting if it pops up let's go over here and see what we got products what we got under products so let's see there's um, HDIP camera I think that's probably what this is there it is product HB612 right, this is the one that we have um, downloads let's see what do we have oh there it comes this is from the other window too by the way so let's save that I don't know why it takes so long for these files to come down okay now that we got them let's uh let's carry on with the instructions here and I'll speed that a bit of that stuff up okay so those would have been in my downloads folder and the first one we said with the IPC tool was called uh, this uh, 2019 okay let's extract that and see what we got all right so all right so this is the device manage that they talk about let's install it yes I want to install I don't know how that's going to record. We'll, we'll see. Oh, this is interesting. Look at this. Um, well, I'm an English speaker, and this makes no sense to me. So I guess English is not uh, not a language they offer. I, I'm going to assume this means next. Um... Okay, where it's going to install it. Device manage, okay. So we'll let it install here. Looks like it uses cute framework. Okay, I guess that's done. Alright. So it's running. But you know what? This is all in Chinese. So look guys, I'm sorry. You know, I um you know I'm an I'm a native English speaker. I, I don't speak Chinese. Uh, looks like the software um, is only available in Chinese or some other language that I, I didn't understand on the install. So let's, uh, this is, um, yeah, this is no good. I want to get rid of this because I, I don't know what, I don't know what any of that means. So let's take a look at what, all right. So this is, uh, looks like version 1.01. 1T 2017-0310. Alright, so let's go back to ICU's website. Maybe uh maybe they got a different version available on the website. Alright, so we'll go to uh, products. And we want uh, HD IP camera.
the HB612 is what I have and let's go back down here to downloads looks like they're advertising the same stuff right um, download this doesn't seem to do anything on my browser um, all right so this is just camera information all right so none of that really means squat to me um, I need the software let's see let's click on software and okay let's see HD IP camera is what we want all right uh, the CMS I don't think we need that I need the device manager all right IPC manager no that's not the cameras Um, okay, I think I'm looking for 612. I'm not seeing it, so let's take something really close, like this one here. Let's download that. Oh, look at there. Uh, no, there's another page. All right, here we go. The device manager for the 612. Oh, looky there. That is the same exact file they ask us to download. So you know what? That's the only way you're going to get that file is in uh, Chinese. All right, so that the device manager, you know, I guess unless you have a way of translating or something, it's just not going to do any good. All right, so let's, uh, let's get out of that. Now, recall that... We downloaded the other per, uh, the other software, the CMS, right here, the CMS PC Clan International. Let's let's extract this and see what we got. All right, uh, yeah, extract it. All right, so there's the folder. Let's install this one. Yep, do it to it. Ah, look, this one at least has an English translation. Okay, so next. Next. That's good. That's good. CMS. Okay, so it's called CMS. All right. So let's uh, see if I can find it here. CMS. Huh, interesting. I can't. Alright, so it has a login dialog, but I can't uh, drag it over to my other desktop. Uh, it is stuck in the middle of the primary display. I can't move the. Uh, I can't move the screen at all, so. Anyway, it's wanting a username and password. The username is super, and I believe that there is no password for it. So now it says loading H.264 DVR, Digital Video Recorder. All right, so this one at least it looks like I can bring over to the main screen. Now this here is covered in the instructions. Now it says that uh, we want to go to System and device manager okay so that brings it up over here um well, let's see let's delete that and then delete that okay so the first thing i want you to do is create a an area we'll just call this i'm just i'm just calling it obs or broadcast and here we're going to tell it to add a device and do an IP search 
to see if it finds our camera. Okay, so it seems to think that it's found it on 10.138. So we'll add that device and say OK. All right, and OK. So now, if I double click on that, I do have the camera. Hi. Right. So it's a little it's a little delayed, but you could expect that. Color's not too bad. Um, so, all right, so that was easy enough to use, and this is the digital, this is the recorder. So uh, we have, uh, see, we can do color correction. It looks like it looks like we can. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, all right, we can do contrast. We can do saturation. All right, uh, let's see here. And it looks like we can set it back to defaults. Okay. Uh, the system, device manager, local configurations. All right, so this is the DVR software um, where you're going to record to and, and alarm settings and stuff like that. So I would say, hey, yeah, that, that, that works. I, you know, I don't have any, um, that's easy enough. But I am really kind of disappointed that the device control software isn't um, you know isn't available in English so I'm looking here uh, let's see what's advanced task decode tour map system local config remote config I don't see let's see is can I that's just showing what streams I can select how many um camera view so it looks like the software supports uh looks like here up to 64 cameras uh full view immediately stuck it over to my um all right well i'm back so it took the i had to right click uh when you go to full screen it automatically shifts it to the the primary display so in my case uh, that's the one I have OBS um, studio mode running on and and so that doesn't help me much all right so it looks like this works but now my only question is um, let's see remote config it says please select a device so it record snapshot okay so it looks like uh, video motion these aren't um, video loss video blind motion okay so it looks like you can um, let's see let's look at the general these are the system settings okay so let's see here system time string language okay so this is just uh, okay compression it looks to me like it's set to h264 and I'm not seeing H.265 available, so I'm not so sure that that's available. That's that's available. All right, so it does have 10, uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution, uh, or um, you can go down to 720, which is probably what I would use it as. Frames uh, per second looks like it defaults to 25. Okay, it does look like it goes up to 30. Uh, whether if you want variable or constant bit rate and um, so it looks like you have uh, different levels well let's see constant bit rate let's see if I jump that up it doesn't change anything let's put it back where it was all right so variable bit rate uh, better uh, best all right so when you do the variable bit rate it will it will adjust the uh, bit rate of kilobits per second uh, frame interval okay so yeah it looks like uh, I'm just gonna cancel that uh, let's see network alright so we can do DH alright so it's DHCP enabled it's got an IP address that's got this address from uh, PFSense uh, 
if you have a standard uh, uh, wireless router or whatever it's going to get it from that so okay so you know look I would say um, I would say this if um, if I were buying uh, I guess the cameras for um, you know some video recording uh, you know for security I think that they would work okay although I'm really disappointed in um, the interface it's not very clean it's sort of rough around the edges uh, it's going to take a little time to learn the uh, DVR portion of it or here they're calling it the CMS so I have other questions um, I believe the instruction said in the device manager that you can uh, you know select web browse or you can just put the IP address of the camera uh, in in the uh, web browser so tell you what let me uh, get that set up and let's let's try that and see what happens okay so it says um, with the device manager and the instructions here that uh, you can you know find the IP address of the camera by clicking search IP um, but you know ours was all in Chinese so it didn't do any good but it also says that you know you can either click web browser or input the IP address in the web browser and then log in select the video stream to view the default username is admin and no password so let's uh, open up our browser here and let's try it out uh, I think we were on um, 192.168.10.1 38 now this will be different for your network okay your browser is too new some features will not work properly please download 51 or earlier okay well that's sort of interesting and we have a uh, we have a login here it's all Chinese and I said it was admin no password. Let's see what that gets us. That's interesting. It's uh, autofilling the. Uh, no, it didn't. Okay, so this looks like sort of like DVR software, but it's 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 empty. Okay, well I tell you what, it did say the browser was too new. So this is um this is Firefox. So let me X out of Firefox and let's bring up um Internet Exploder version eleven. Okay, so here's Internet Explorer eleven. So let's try going well I tell you I don't know. Let's see what this one says. Okay, so all right, so it's wanting to run an ActiveX module from an unverified publisher. Well, that would be from the camera. But I'm also seeing a download link here. Well, let's hit allow and see what happens. Well, it's just sp spinning. All right, so let's uh, let's hit this download link. Oh wait a minute, I want English. And we said admin, and no password, so log in. Okay, so maybe this is gonna work. All right, so it's asking for the bitrate type mainstream or the extra stream well we'll take the mainstream that should be the 
highest one. And eh, there you go. All right, so it looks like it does work through the web browser. And let's see, other. All right, so we can change the ratio. Right now, that's four by three. That's 16 by nine. Okay, I'm all right with that. Well, let's see. This is not a PTZ camera, so I don't expect any of this stuff to work. Uh, color. Let's see, does this stuff work? Oh, yeah. So we can adjust the color and all that sort of stuff. What's this? Q. I think this one, okay. Ooh, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Uh, let's put it back to defaults. Okay. All right, so at the top we have uh, playback, log, device config, local config, log out. Let's see, what's in the local config? Uh, alarm settings, normal settings, alarm settings, uh, system settings, record directory, um, okay, about, alright, so that, alright, let's look at the device configuration, and this should be, oh look, that's, uh, well, actually displays better than uh, it did in the CMS application. Uh, let's see, uh, although there's still a little bit of, of um, layout issues. Okay, so the intelligent alert, um, uh, channel snapshots. Okay, so all right, what we're seeing here, this is um, different settings you can set for uh, the camera. You know, if if you have uh, video loss or you know you have um, blind spots I think you can program a blind spot let's see um, looks like you can set a time that it doesn't record or it's blind all right so this uh, looks like settings so this is general remember we were in this one here in the CMS oh yeah this uh, Oh, hey, look, this is a little different. This is actually, this one has a time zone where the other one didn't. So, now this should be stuff on, see, I live in Central Time. Okay, awesome. Um, time for, okay, okay. All right, so it saved to the device. Now, this menu that we're looking at should be right on the camera, uh, software that we're modifying on the camera itself. Okay, so... Uh, the ACP enabled adaptive IP. We're going to turn that off. That's the address that it's received. Ah, here we go. Media port. So three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know what that is. Uh, the Onvif port is eighty-eight ninety-nine, and of course the HDT port is eighty. Okay. Now let's cancel that. Let's uh, look, look at network services. Uh, is this a list of what it has? Let's see. IP filter. I double click. Oh, okay. So you can email. Okay. So here's where you would set up your email server for it to email you. Uh, here we go. All right. RTSP. All right. Well, it says that it's enabled and it's using port 554, which is the default port. Okay. All right. So um, without getting into a whole lot of this stuff, let's see what else we got here. Uh, account this is probably um, accounts for the camera itself who can log in uh, yep that's what it, that's what it is uh, reboot let's see upgrade all right so oh interesting okay so there's an online upgrade available let's cancel that real quick and uh, let's see do we get all right, here what version are we at we're at um I guess the build date so 7-18-2019 at 3-26 so let's uh yeah so that's newer that's uh 10 10 let's upgrade it you've seen it here first does it work 
Um, the only thing I can tell you is that uh, the camera has froze. Now this is went back, so I don't know what this means. Uh, device config. All right, so the camera is still offline. All right, do, okay, so it's updating. <clears throat> do not power off during updating. Okay. So we'll see what the uh, update to the camera does. I hear you, buddy. Okay, so it says the update was successful. And I'm guessing it's rebooting. Let's see. I'm not sure what it's doing. It may be. Okay, well, my um, camera port is in the way. There are some buttons down here that allow you to do full screen, uh, con uh, connect all videos, uh, disconnect video, snapshot, all channel record, all channel, uh, close channel record. So, hmm. All right, well, I tell you what, let's, uh, let's go back into the thing let's open back up uh, Internet Explorer and uh, no we don't. okay let's go back in there Okay, I'm not real sure what's going on here. It acts like it's uh, not responding. So let me uh, let me reboot the camera. So I have the camera here, and uh, I'm just going to unplug the PoE switch. All right, and plug it back in. All right, it's negotiating. All right, I heard the uh, camera click back on. So let's see if let's see if that done any good. All right, 192.168.10.138. Okay, that's kind of interesting. So uh, I'm going to assume that one of two things. Either the... Um, Either the upgrade failed, right, or because it has an upgrade and, and has been rebooted, maybe it's got a different IP address. So let me fire back off that tool. I think it was called CMS. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, log into that. I'm waiting for it to start up. It's on my primary screen. I'll drag it over here in just a second. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me. Okay, so let's uh, let's go back to system device manager, and we'll select our OBS and add a device and do an IP search. I'll look at that 10.140. Let's add the device. Okay, and single camera. Yep, that's what it was. So it's changed the IP address. So let's, uh, I want to X out of this. Yes. And. bring this back up and then this is changed to 140 so 192.168.10.140 okay um, wants to run the active X yeah allow it all right so we have to select English this was admin and no password Log in. Okay, so this is okay. All right, so the, yeah, there it is. So it took the upgrade. Okay, let's uh, let's back to ratio. All right, let's go back over and look at our device config and see if there's anything noticeable. Um, the layout of the thing here isn't uh, too much. Let's go take it. So this should be 1010. 10. There it is, 1010. 10. So we do uh, have an update. I don't know what these status numbers mean. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's go back to config. And let's go back to encoding. Ah, look at there. H265 uh, is available here. 264 isn't. That's kind of weird. So there's some discrepancies between the CMS software and the net surveillance web software, right? From um, accessing the camera directly. Um, Oh, here's another one. Looky here. So we have available, okay, either 720 or 1080p uh, with H265 compression, but only 25 frames per second. I cannot, it looks like I am forced to variable bit, bit rate only. I will just set that to better. Yes. Okay, and whether or not if you want the audio or the video. Okay, so Okay. All right, so let's um let's put it this way. I think uh for 30 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever for an IP camera, uh if you're looking to, you know, get uh uh, inexpensive camera because a lot of these cameras I know are over a hundred bucks uh, it's probably a good buy uh, although you know with uh, a caveat right the uh, the device control software um, looks like it's only available in Chinese or some other language uh, just not English and being an English speaker it doesn't help me much uh, the CMS software uh, seems to work okay it has um, some layout issues uh, but other than that I think it'd probably be okay the um, software download seems to be a little slow from the website okay so other than that you know wouldn't uh, wouldn't um, you know I would say that um, you know it's probably worth it if it's forty dollars or less you know um, you know I don't know how, how good will it be I don't know but now, 
Um, let me come back and uh, let's talk about this of why I wanted to try out these cameras. So I'll, I'll come back here in just a second and we'll talk about that. Okay, recall that when we try to download the uh, device manager, which would allow you to configure the camera, um, that it was only available in Chinese. Well, the camera states that is OnVIF compatible. And uh, so if you go to Source Forge, <clears throat> you can get the OnVIF device manager, right? You can search for OnVIF device manager, or you can go to sourceforge.net slash project slash OnVIF DM, okay? Download it. It's an MSI installable for Windows. <clears throat> and um, when you run it, you will uh, you can refresh it and it will find all the Onvif uh, supported devices on the network. So here you see um, the um, camera that we just installed, and we can log into this camera by remember this was, was admin and no um, password, and then we can uh, see you know certain information and set certain information about it. Plus you know we get a sort of a image snapshot down here right so let's uh, I'm just gonna maximize this so maybe that we can see it a little better and let's uh, let's check out the NVT is the name of the camera right so I'm gonna click identification name NVT I imagine this could be anything that you want it to be uh, the location uh, the manufacturer yada 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 got all the information about it time settings you know central daylight time whether if you want to adjust it uh, maintenance um, this is if you want to do a reboot or reset or whatever network settings here you can you know turn DHCP on and off configure the host name which was not available in uh, some of the other settings so there's a uh, <clears throat> there's a uh, you know some options that are going to be available in Onvif that uh, they're not making available in their software so the user management you can set up and create users whether if you need to install a certificate, um, I'm not sure what the web page does. Any events that are surrounding the camera, and then uh, if we look down here at uh, live video, <coughs> we can uh, we should get a live video feed from it. There it is, um, and it's going to be a little bit delayed. Oops, uh, I just got a Windows uh, firewall. Um, thing where it blocked it. So let's try this again. Okay, so there's the uh, live video feed. Now nah, I'm losing the signal for whatever reason. Video streaming. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so here's the uh, encoding interval interval frames per rate. Can we? Yeah, we can go up to thirty. Okay. Bit rate limit H two sixty four. What size you want to stream it, etc. Um, encoding interval, Jovi. So you can set up uh, the uh, changes there. All right, imaging settings. So here you can uh, adjust the colors, analytics. Um, don't know what this stuff is. Rules. So I mean, you'd have to go through and look, but. So anyway, the, the point is that uh, you can actually, it is, the camera is actually OnVIF compliant and you can go in and you can make changes with the OnVIF uh, device manager that you can download from uh, from the internet. So I'm going to exit out of that. <clears throat> now, um, the issue that I sort of had was um, I didn't know how to uh, connect to the RT, the real-time uh, streaming stream and uh, because everything that I tried just wouldn't work so I done a little search on there <clears throat> and I come across uh, this uh, high CU IP camera right this is uh, you know talking about the uh, generate the URLs for the camera so that you can see them so here's the HB 612 let me scroll up make sure you can see that there's the HB 612 um, if you click on it and say, okay, well, what's the uh, what's the address? Well, ours was, uh, uh, or mine is uh, 10.140, right? And uh, it's admin. There's no password uh, on it. 
channel zero is fine generate so here I've um, maybe and I okay it's so you can't really see it but I want to copy this uh, string to the clipboard and now if I fire off VLC media player and bring it over I can say media um, open network stream and I can um, paste that stream in there and say play as soon as the firewall says it's all right all right all right so there, there you go. We're getting. 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 Okay, I just muted the VLC audio. All right. So um, the there is a little bit of a delay, uh, but we do have the live stream. You can see that there behind me. Uh, say hi, Joe. Say hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. How are you? <laughs> anyway, just kidding. Um, so this this stream here could be used right in OBS um, as a video source and that's really what I want to explore and if you're interested in that um, let me know also um, I believe that there are other DVRs available and uh, let me get one set up and I'll bring you right back okay so I told you that um, there are other um, uh, softwares you know for surveillance and one of them uh is on as i spy connect which will connect to the uh, cameras and hopefully i can show this i've really burdened down this computer but if we look here you see this is um the uh website is ispyconnect.com it's an open source um surveillance software here you see an agent that will work in a uh, web browser uh or you can get the uh, windows um 32 or 64 bit for uh, Windows 7, 8, and 10, and then Windows XP and Vista, there's still a download for that. So um, now I'm running Windows 7, of course, you know, come January, it's not supposed to be any good, but it, you know, um, it is what it is. I'm sitting behind a firewall, and, and this machine is simply just going to be for video recording. So hopefully, it um, is picking on this up. So I want to bring over. Um, Well, I guess I've already shut it down. Let's see. Okay, I guess I guess it shut down. So let me uh, see if I can bring up uh, iSpy. Let me close these windows down. Let me free up a, a little bit of resources here and see if I can get it to uh, start. And iSpy 64 bits. And see what we have. If it is start up. Okay, so here you see the um, uh, the iSpy um, surveillance software. I'm only just barely scratching the surface here. I just added the camera that we added. So um, there are other uh, you know softwares available for you. So. I'm going to exit out of this because it is pretty resource intensive and uh, you know, I don't want to don't just want to eat up resources okay so um, I got a couple more things to say here and I'm gonna call this video done okay well I want to wrap this up um, in a nutshell so to speak so the cameras are fairly inexpensive you know I think you can cut them on sale right now for 30 bucks or so I have to go back and look at the page I don't remember it's been a couple hours since uh, we we have been there or since I've been there uh, so the uh, soft the the manual um, is uh, quite small uh, leaves uh, leaves a, a little uh, is left wanting okay um, the uh, two pieces of software that they suggest that you download um, the first one is only available in Chinese so that's sort of a deal killer in a way if it's uh, just the um, configured device control or device configuration utility if that's all it is but if that's all it is we have a workaround um, with the Onvif uh, device manager that's available and I showed you that a little while ago uh, the 
the um, CMS software, you know, the uh, digital video recorder software, DVR software, seems to work okay. There's some layout issues. Uh, it's a little kludgy. Uh, I noticed that um, the device configuration uh, in that versus the web uh, viewer um, is they're, they're different. Okay, um, but the Onvif um, device manager that you can download uh, um, really is pretty pretty thorough. So the camera is in fact Onvif um, compatible. Okay, so uh, they're right there. It will it does depending on um, how you're streaming, what you're streaming. It is H264, H265 compatible, either uh, variable or um, constant bit rate. Um, so mostly all the uh, literature about the cameras uh, pretty accurate. Uh, the um, I had to find the streaming. Uh, the string for real-time streaming protocol uh, actually found it on another website because uh, I couldn't get it to work but now uh, I that string that they used uh, does work now there might be some other way of finding that information uh, from the camera you know to, to get that or whatever um, so but I just have maybe haven't spent enough time so my um, overall grade for this product is probably a B minus, right? Only because I think that if uh, it's going to be available to English speaking or other speaking individuals, that it should those language packs ought to be available for it. Okay, um, in this day and age, there's really no excuse for that. Um, the software, uh, while functional, it, it does function. Um, there there are some layout issues um, um, at least you know with the way it appears and, and how things are laid out but it does work and you uh, do have color correction and all kinds of this is not a PTZ camera in other words you know you can't uh, zoom and focus and move and all that stuff uh, this is a very basic camera um, so for home surveillance I think it's worth it um, if you are willing to work around uh, the software issues so uh, that's my review of this camera. If you got any questions, uh, please consider, uh, you know, or please put them down there in the comment section. And I'll answer any question that I can. If you're interested in using this uh, camera in OBS, um, I will uh, show that, and probably in a near uh, video, I'm just going to do a demo video of uh, uh, using, you know, two camera angles um, from these cameras. And OBS. That's initially what I asked uh, to uh, to review them for to see if they'd work for that. Uh, but this video is carried on too long, so there have to be another video. Um, like I said, if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, so other than that, hey, if uh, these videos are helpful to you or you find them entertaining or useful, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. And other than that, have a blessed day.